sunshiny day. Amen. Temperatures are going to warm up. Yes. And uh, let's begin with hymn number 175. 175. Standing on the ground. Place, Lord, is just, uh, it's just a happier place for knowing 
that all of us have the same call, same purpose, and, and the same uh, drive. And Lord, that's just to see your face in heaven. And Lord, we thank you for those who, who decided to come this morning. Lord, we thank you for the visitors. Lord, we thank you for the kids. Lord, I just pray that the folks who are not here with us, Lord, that are traveling still. I know the Phillips are not here doing traveling, and uh, your brother. Lord, we ask that you be, continue to be with Brother Marlo, Lord, that you be at the Sealies. Uh, Lord, folks who are not here with us this morning, but Lord, I know they're here in the Spirit and praying for us as we have services this morning with Edgar as well. Lord, we ask that you just give us a great service. Lord, just be with our singing. Lord, help us to sing out and help us to be emptied of ourselves, Lord, and be filled up with you. We love you. Thanks for what you mean to us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. So remain standing and turn in your hymnal to hymn number 199. 199. Christ receiveth sinful men. Are you glad for that today? Amen. Christ receiveth sinful men. Amen. Anyway, 
So, men's provisions tomorrow. We're going to be praying for our missionaries and uh, we're going to have a good fellowship with all the men. So, if you can make it, uh, we'll have to have you at 6 o'clock here at the church. We'd love for you to come in. And then, here's a new one. I know we had a potluck last uh, Sunday for I Love My Church Sunday, but we're going to have potlucks once a month now, and they're going to be in the beginning of the month. So, you say, Pastor, you're crazy. I know. That's why I love you, right? Uh, so, Sunday, March 1st, which is next Sunday, we're going to have a potluck already. Uh, we're going to have a time where we can get together for fellowship, and each, each time we have those potlucks once a month, we're going to have an afternoon service. So it makes it easier if we're already here, we might as well just have a service all together. And so they'll be about the same time as we did at I Love My Church Sunday. So everyone can stay. It won't be long. Uh, I just love the fellowship of all of us being together, uh, being a church family, and uh, having that time together. So we'll do that March 1st next Sunday. Uh, have a potluck. There's no theme for it. If you can bring something, bring it. Uh, if you can't, bring it anyway, right? So just bring as much as you can. It's a good time for us to fellowship. And then we'll save for the afternoon. So tell folks about that. Uh, last week we had folks visiting at 5 o'clock uh, for our evening service. And we weren't here uh, because they weren't here in the morning. So they didn't know anything about it. Uh, we put it on Facebook. We put it on our website. But uh, they didn't know anything about it. So uh, hopefully I'll catch them if they come at 5 for next Sunday. And then, of course, attention, Village Baptist Church people. We need help. Uh, not me, but we. We need help, right? We need some volunteers in the nursery. Children's Church, Music, Ushering, and Heart Greeting Ministries. If you can help in any of these areas, please talk to myself or my wife. Uh, we have a lot going on, as you can see. Uh, there's As our church grows, we're going to need more help. And so if you can help in any area, uh, we would love for you to help us with that, please. Uh, if you think you can sing a solo, uh, then please let me know. Uh, but if you say, well, Pastor, I can't sing, then you're going to sing a solo and none of us can hear, it, hear you, okay? So, uh, but we want, if you can make a joyful noise, we'd love for you to have that. Those are a couple of things we have, of course, on Monday. Ladies Bible study at 10.30 for all the ladies. And if you've been blessed by that, ladies, would you say amen? amen. It's been a good time for the ladies to, to get together in fellowship. Uh, are you all doing a uh, some type of fellowship this Monday or no? Just regular? Well, just regular. Okay. So they're still in the book of Romans, I believe. Still in the book of Romans. All right. So that's tomorrow at 10.30. Men's permissions at 6 p.m. And then we do have our, our Tuesday uh, evening Bible study and prayer time that I want to encourage everyone to come to uh, because it is a good time for us, again, to, to get away from the world and just get together on a Tuesday night. And we're going through the book of Proverbs. And if, it, if you haven't come, if you haven't heard it, I'm telling you, it's, it's a good... I'm learning as, as, as I teach it. And so it's good for all of us to do that. And then, of course, our, our Sunday night service tonight is at 5 p.m. So if you can make it to any of those services, we'd we'll love to have you. Those are all the announcements uh, that I have for missionaries for the month of Bill and, and Pamela Door. And so, all right, as we take our song books and turn to song number 149. Actually, I want to say this. We have a baptism this morning. I'm excited for that. I'm excited to get this baptistry. Brother Eric and I, we, and, and Brandon, we were help, uh, helping us with it. And uh, uh, we were... We, what do we do, brother, brother Eric? We, we uh, used the... Uh, can't, can't say it. We flex sealed the baptistry. We made sure that it was fine. We sealed up all the cracks and all the rust spots. And so it's held water. Brother Eric came by yesterday to make sure it was holding water. I was looking at it all night to make sure it was holding water. So it's holding water. It's heated. And I'm going to have a fun time in this hot tub this morning. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to baptize. I really am. Excited to get this the water stirring and uh, Rabina and Granger are both getting baptized and both got saved. My wife was able to lead Miss Rabina to the Lord and I was able to lead Grace to the Lord. And we're excited for that. And so that's going to be this morning after our service, after we're done preaching. Uh, so 149, when we see Christ, if y'all will all stand, please. We're going to shake some hands, greet people around you, uh, let people folks know that you are happy to see them. So you don't have that emotion.
fill this out, please. Uh, we don't expect you to give anything. You can just put this into the offering plate, please. At this time, we're going to have an offering. I'll ask our men to come down. Uh, folks, continue to give. I'm still on cloud nine from last week and what God has uh, been doing here at Village Baptist Church. And I uh, praise God for what we were able to raise last week and uh, some of the projects that we're going to be able to go uh, forward with. But this is the time now where we can give back to the Lord for all that He's given to us. And so, uh, again, if you're visiting with us, just put that uh, connection card, fold it up, put it in there. And if you have uh, a member, if you want to join any of the ministries we have, put that in there as well. Uh, but just be found faithful this morning. Be a cheerful giver. I don't think this is a hard time because this is, this is easy for us. This should, it should be easy for us. And so, we'll pray, and then we will have our offering this morning. Lord, thank you again for all that you mean to us. Lord, thank you for the time that we get to give back to you. Lord, thank you so much for giving us so much in our life. Lord, we sometimes we forget uh, what you've done and we forget of what you've given to us. But Lord, we thank you for always providing, always protecting us, Lord, and keeping this church here uh, in 2020 and Lord, for many more years to come. Lord, I love your people and I thank you for them each and every day. Lord, don't, I don't want to take them for granted for anything, Lord. And I ask, Lord, as we take this offering this morning, that it will meet the needs of this church and that you'll bless the gift and the giver. We love you. We thank you for what you mean to us. In your name we pray. Amen.
strong enough. If you're there, say amen. amen. One more time. If you're there, say amen. amen. There it is. That's good. That's good. Got to bring bring some south up here, huh? So, well, I don't want to say that because some, some of the folks in the south, you know, they uh, they, they yell. And I mean, they, they whoop and holler. And I'm, I'm not into all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't do all that, but. Good. Job chapter number one this morning. I just want to give us a thought. Give us something and uh, something that I've been thinking about and uh, praying about. And you know, we've all come to a point in our life where uh, we want to uh, somewhat give up. We we want it all to, to end and we want to quit. And and so this book, Job, it's it's a good reminder for us to to re to remind us don't quit, don't give up, keep going, go forward. Uh, let God let God have the reins of your life and let God, let God be God and just don't give up. And we live in a day and age today that people give up on everything. They give up on their marriages, on children, on work, on relationships, uh, their church. They give up. They give up on life. We have, a, we have a world full of these people who just give up. If something isn't going their way, they give up. Uh, there was a, a, a couple who were married for, I think, about four months and they had some disagreements with one another. Uh, and one of the disagreements they had is that this, her husband would not put the cat back on the toothpaste. Oh. Wouldn't do it. And it bugged her. And so she decided that she was going to divorce him over that. And we look at that and we think, man, that's so minor. But we think, uh, folks now, they, they marriage is not uh, a sacred thing. And now it's just get together and... Uh, well, this seems cool, and I always wanted to get married, and most of the time, those marriages, they last probably a couple of years, and they're done. But because they really don't know each other, and their love is based on their lust instead of love. And so, uh, folks just give up. Uh, there's no uh, going forward for them, and they just see, well, I'm not going to go on with it anymore, so I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to quit because it's easier. Uh, I think all of us would say it is easier to give up, isn't it? And then keep going and you just throw the top and say, alright, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm giving up. But why do people give up? Why do people just say, I'm going to throw the top? Well, I've learned off a couple of things. A lack of confidence. Some folks give up because they're not confident in themselves or they're confident in someone else. Uh, some folks give up because of sin. Sin's a, a big thing why folks give up. Uh, what about pride? Our pride makes us give up. Well, I, I'm going to do it my way, so I'm just going to not do it. What about laziness? Well, that's big, right? Lay up on the couch, and my wife tells me to do something. Ah, I'm not going to do it. I, I, I'm going to give up on it. I quit because I'm lazy. Uh, I don't want to put my mind to it. Uh, so laziness. Uh, what about if they're, they're scared? People give up because they're scared. Uh, they, 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 they're nervous. They don't know the outcome, so they give up. I, I think of folks who... I know that the Lord has called them to do something for, for Him and for His cause, to either pass the church or go on the mission field, uh, to do something in that form, but they're scared, and so they say, well, I'm not going to go. And so they give up. We, we want an immediate result. That's why people give up. People give up because they want it now. They want an immediate uh, result. So they give up. If it's not now, then um, it's not, it's not going to be ever. And so they give up. But this morning I want us to, I want to encourage all of us to, for this one thing, just don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep going. And so I'm going to look in the book, uh, the book of Job, and just go through a couple of things in Job's life that Job did that can help us not to give up. And not just to give up, but give up on, on these certain things. Uh, I think of a, a lady. Uh, her name is Forge Chadwick. Anybody know that name? Anybody at all know? Good. Well, that's good. Uh, she was the lady who swam uh, the English uh, Channel. And she, she uh, swam from uh, Cat Catalina, the islands, all the way to the coast of California. And so there was about a 21 mile span. Icy water, Tetris waters. And so she thought, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it well. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swim that channel. And so she, she made her march. She said her name, July 14th, 
1952. She said, I'm going to go out and I'm going to swim. I'm going to do it. Now, there have been men that did it, but there had never been a woman. So at the age of 34, she set out. On July 4th, it was televised. Folks were watching on July 4th, and she was going. She starts her race, and she goes in, and she's swimming, and she's swimming, and she's swimming. 16 hours passes by. 16 hours pass by. And she begins to feel numbness in her fingers. And as she was swimming, there was a plane above or a helicopter that was above that was shooting sharks for her. Uh, shooting them off because there were sharks in the way. And as she kept swimming, she kept swimming, she kept swimming, she kept swimming. 16 hours. She said, I don't know if I can go anymore. My, I feel numb. I, I can't go any farther. I'm giving up. So she calls to her mom and her trainer. And that day it was so foggy she couldn't see anything. It was, it was just one of those days that, I, I don't know if you know the, the California coast, but when you go in through San Francisco in the morning, it's, that, it's really, really cold. And the, the fog comes up and you can't see anything. And so she's swimming. She can't see anything ahead of her. She's just continuing to go. And then 16 hours goes and her body becomes numb. And so she tells herself, well, I can't see the coast. I can't see where I'm going. So I'm going to give up. And so she calls to her mom and she calls to the trainer. And the trainer and her mom tell her, keep going, keep going. And she said, I can't. I, I'm giving up. So 16 hours into it, she gave up. As she was getting pulled onto that, that uh, boat, that lifeboat, she gets up on the boat and her mom and her, the trainer said she could have kept going, she should have kept going. She said, I couldn't. I couldn't go. I couldn't see. I, I couldn't see land. And my body was getting numb, so I just decided I'm going to give up. Her mom told her to look ahead. She looked. And she was about five miles away from shore. So close. But she gave up. She gave up. Decided not to go forward, but she gave up. And that haunted her. That, that got to her, that got inside of her. But I want us to, I want us this morning, and I, I want to, to make it very clear, uh, plain and clear. Don't give up. Don't give up. Though life may seem that's hard, though life may seem that it may not be going your way, don't give up. A couple of things that we can see in Job's life. Let's look at Job chapter number 1. Uh, read verse number 1 through verse number 12. There was a man in the, the land of Uz whose name was Job. And the man was perfect and, up, and upright, and one that feared God and shewed evil. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 candles, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 uh, she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and, and feasted in their houses uh, every one his day, and sent and called for uh, their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so. When the days of their feasting were gone about, that Joe sent uh, and, and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Joe said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Joe continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered, and said, uh, answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? Hast not thou made a hedge about him? And about his house, and about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself, but not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth 
from the presence of the Lord. Uh, we get to the story of Job, and, and this is a, a very well-known story that all of us know about Job. And Job was a man who had it all. Job was a rich man, but he was a man who feared God and eschewed evil. Uh, that word eschewed means he just shunned evil. He didn't like the, the, the thought of it, so he stayed far away from evil. And so one day as Job was uh, sanctifying and, and he was giving sacrifice for all his, his ten children, he decided to go and uh, to do that for them because he said, well, they may have sinned, so I want to do that for them. And as time went on, and, uh, Satan, the sons of man, came to present a work to the Lord, and Satan had come with them. Uh, so Satan was uh, with them, and the Lord said, where did you come from? He said, well, I just came from walking about to and fro about the earth, and, and so you, you, you tell me today that Satan is enlivening our earth, and Job said he was, he was walking about and, and seeking whom he would divide, just like the, the roaring lion, and today, Satan's doing the same thing. He's walking to and fro, trying to destroy the Christian, and so the Lord said, where did you come from? And Satan said, well, I just came from the earth, I was just walking around and seeing folks and, you know, just doing my thing, and, and so he said, well, hey, uh, so, so what are you doing anyway? He said, well, the Lord said, well, have you considered my servant Job? He's a, he's a great man, an upright man, that fears God and assures evil. And Satan comes out and says, well, the only reason why he's serving you is because you gave him everything. You're blessing him. That's the only reason why. Plus, you have a hedge about his life. You put protection over him. So, of course, he's going to serve you with his life. You, you're blessing him. But I bet if you were to take that hedge away from him... He would curse you, and he would, he would curse your name and not serve you anymore. And the Lord said, okay, you're off for the challenge. I'll give you everything. I'll take the hedge up. The only thing you can do is kill Job. The only thing you can do is kill him. But you can do everything else that you want to want. And so Satan took that and said, okay, I'll do it. But watch, he's going to curse your name. How many of you, and of course the story goes on, and uh, we look at verse number uh, verse number 13. And there was a day when the sons of his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The ox was plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the uh, 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 Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell them. The Sabians came in and they killed all his kids. All ten. Just think out of father. I'm going to give up. I'm done. I'm going to give up on the Lord. I'm done. He took my kids from me. I'm giving up. But that wasn't it. That servant, the Bible says in verse number six, while he was yet speaking. So think about this. this folks believe that Job, all these things happened in days. No, this happened immediately. This happened one after another the same day. While that servant was speaking about his kids dying, there comes another servant and says, while he was yet speaking the servant, there came also another and said, the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away. So then he lost his camels. Verse number eight, uh, 17. While they were yet speaking again, there also another said that the uh, Chaldeans made out of three bands and fell upon the camels and they have carried them away. Verse number 18. While they were yet speaking, there came also another said, the sons of thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind. And you think, one after another, after another, after another. This just not happen in one week. This happened in one day. Job lost everything. Everything. Everything that was mentioned in verse 1 through 12, his, his, his donkeys, his camels, his kids, his, his, his livestock, his wealth based on what he had, all of it was gone. I would have gave up. I lost my kids. I lost, I lost all, my, all that I had, my wealth. And Job didn't do that. Let's look at verse number 21. This is something that Job said that's so great. He said, Naked came out of the mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, instead of saying, I give up, I'm going to quit, I'm moving on, Job said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, the Lord giveth, but he also taketh away. But 
blessed be the name of the Lord. So I want to, from Job's life this morning, I got three points. What for us that we should not give up on? We should not give up on. Number one this morning, don't ever give up on God. Don't ever give up on God. He gave us life. God, He loves us. God is trying to show us off to Satan. You think about that. You think, well, why is all this stuff happening to me? I, I'm going to give up and walk out on God? Did you ever consider that maybe God is saying this? Hey, Satan, do you see that? Do you see that? You see my creation? You see him or do you see her? Go ahead and tempt them. Go ahead and do whatever you want, but I bet you this, they won't curse my name. We give up on God so, so easy. We give up on God. We walk away from God. Well, this is going on. I don't have finances. This is going on. Our marriage is going well. I'm going to give up on God and walk away. Yet we don't think that maybe that's a trial that God wants. God just lifted up that head and said, go ahead. I want, I want you to grow in faith. I want you to bring honor and glory. And I want folks to see through this trial that you won't curse my name, but instead you'll honor me. Uh, you, you'll give me the glory for all that, that I've done for you. You know, there's things in my life that I wasn't uh, okay with, but you know, I, I realized that maybe it was for His good and for His glory. It was for His good and for His glory. But don't give up on God. God is not telling Satan, hey, uh, hey, go ahead and, and see what, do what you want with them, but watch, you'll see. You'll see. God is trying to build our faith. Many give up on God because they don't see Him. That's why we give up most of the time. We don't see God, so we say, well, I'm going to give up on Him. It's easier that way. It's easier for me to walk on right now and, and not have a connection. It's easy for me just to walk off. My prayers aren't answered, so I'm going to quit. Something tragic, and the only, the only person to blame is God, so I'm going to quit. I'm going to give up. Think of some folks who gave up on God. What about Mary and Martha? When Lazarus died. If you would have been here for, if you would have been here earlier, Lazarus would have still been alive. This is all your fault. Well, we get that way sometimes. Lord, if you would just answer my prayer, Lord, if you were just here, Lord, all this would have been perfect and fine. Four days, Lazarus was dead, and Mary, Martha, well, he's gone. Thanks a lot, Jesus. You did this. Gave up on God. And I think of Job's wife. Right here in our passage. Verse number 9 in chapter 2. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still remain, uh, thy retain thy integrity? He said, Why are you still, why are you still uh, a servant God? Why do you still act this way? God's taking everything away from us. And you're still, you're still going to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord? She said, Curse God and die. She gave up on God. She gave up on God. And, and just think, the, the time that Job really needed her, she gave up on him. She gave up on God. She said, just curse God and die. Give up on God. Can I tell you folks, don't ever give up on God. Don't ever give up. Though we go through hard times in our life, though we, we may not see the outcome, you know, while we see the storm, God sees the rainbow on the other side. Though we see uh, the bad times, and uh, though we see uh, a, a mountain that we can't climb on the other side, God sees, God sees that beautiful plain. Though we may not see what God sees, I already know that God is already caring about our tomorrow. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Secondly, this morning, don't ever, don't ever give up on other people. Don't ever give up on other people. When you give up on others, they feel alone and worthless. I can just imagine what Job felt when his wife gave up on him. When he just said, when she told him, just curse God and die. Just, just curse God and die. There's no need for you to live. Just, just get out of here. Give up. I could feel Job felt alone. He felt by himself. No one's, no one's with me. Uh, the, the woman that I love is, is 
telling me just to curse God and die, and yet God gave us all this. And... But Job never gave up on his wife. Let's go to chapter number 4, and verse number 8. Job 4, verse 8. I think that's right. Excuse me, let's go, excuse me, Job 6, Job 6. Job 6, verse number 14 through 17. The Bible says this to him that is afflicted pity. Uh, this is one of Job's friends. They come now. Uh, Job, you think when you're going through a hard time, many of us, we, we like to confide in a friend. We we'll love when friends come. And, uh, so Job now is with a friend. Now his friend is speaking. To him that is afflicted, pity should be uh, showed from his friend. Uh, but forsaking the fear of the Almighty, Job is saying this. Uh, the Hebrew meaning is, is that it's a mirage. Job is going on. I'll get to that. Let's go to verse number 15. My brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook. And as the stream of brooks they pass away, which are blackish by a reason of ice and wherein the snow is hid. What time they wax warm, they vanish. When it is hot, they are consumed out of their, their place. The paths of their way are turned aside. They go to nothing and perish. What is Job saying here? What Job is saying when his friends were supposed to be uh, the, the people that had his back, the folks who were supposed to uh, have him and encourage him, that Hebrew word, uh, that meaning there that Job was saying was that they were like a mirage, an oasis. They were supposed to be that, but instead, uh, when uh, I think we see some movies and you know, folks are they're looking for water, and they're, they're trying to the, the desert, looking for the water, and they see all they see palm trees and a, and a beautiful, a beautiful uh, water flow, and you know, you know what I'm talking about, you know, the mirage, and they see, and then they get close to it, they start running, and they get close, and it's gone. Job said that's how he felt when his friends gave up on him. They, from afar off, they looked, he said, oh, here comes my friends, thank God. Lord, thank you for sending them. And then they ended up being just pity to him. If you continue to read the story, honestly, from verse from chapter 4 all the way up to chapter 42, the whole time they were just telling Job, Job, there's sin in your life, dude. You need to get it right. There's a reason why all this is going on. You have sin in your life. You need to repent and go back to God. The whole, all through the, the whole book, that's what it is, going back and forth. Job's saying, I don't have any sin. They're saying, hey, there's sin going on. But don't give up on other people. Don't ever give up on other people. Job never gave up on his friends or on his wife. If you think about that, his wife told him to curse God and die, but yet he never gave up on her. Never gave up on his friends. He stayed with them for all those chapters. Never, never cursed them, never did anything. Job's faith was helping others around him. If you think about that, even from the very beginning of, of when Job started this whole thing, Job was in the temple giving sacrifices for his kids. His faith was helping them. His faith was helping them go on. And could I tell you folks, when, when you give up, you, you may not see the folks around you who are looking at you, who are still going because you're still going. And yet, if you give up, guess what, they're going to give up too. If I give up now, if I just throw the towel to God, you let this happen to me, Lord, you allow this to happen to me. I'm done with you. I'm done with, I'm done with serving you. I'm done with uh, praising your name and giving you glory. I'm done. Guess what my wife is going to think? I'm bringing her down with me. My kids. If I just throw the towel and give up on God. If I give up on others. If, if, just think of the effect that my life will have on others when I give up. What about when you give up? I'm not going to do this whole church thing again. I'm done. I'm giving up, throwing in the towel. Just imagine how it affects those around you. Those that you may not think that are watching you, but they're watching your every move. I know many of you have grandkids and just think about their life. They're relying on grandma and grandpa to keep on with the faith, to keep on going, to keep, to keep trucking on. And then you just decide, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm done. How that will do with them. Your faith can help, so don't give up on others. Don't walk away. It would have been easy for Job to walk away from all his negativity, but instead, he chose to hang on. He 
chose to hang on because others were counting on him. We will never know the effect that we have on others and on someone's life. Love them, pray for them, and help them. Don't ever give up on others. Don't ever. Folks may have done you wrong, but don't give up on them. Don't shun them off. Don't give up on them. They, they, they may need you. There's been folks who've done me wrong, but you know what? I still look at them as friends, and I call them up and encourage them. Why? Because they don't need me to give up. They need me to keep going for them, for their cause. Number one, don't give up on God. Number two, don't give up on others. And thirdly, this morning, and lastly, don't ever give up on yourself. Don't ever give up on yourself. You know, that's the easiest thing to do, is give up on us. Give up on you. You, you just say, well, I can't do it anymore, so I'm done. I'm, I'm giving up on me. You know, that's the easy way out. I think about suicide. It's one of the leading causes why, because folks give up on themselves. I can't do this. I'm not good enough. My confidence is weak. I, I can't go forward. I'm going to give up on me. But again, they don't think about the effect that they have on other people, their family, friends, those who love them. Don't ever give up on yourself. Well, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I think I have to speak a little Spanish, so si se puede. Si se puede, that means yes, you can. Si se puede, you can do it. You can go on for the Lord, you can. I think of Job chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, uh, here. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and it smote Job with sore boils. This is when Job got the boils on him. And I would have gave up then, hurting and, and, and just disgusting, pussing. And, uh, but instead of giving up, the Bible says, from the sole of his foot unto his crown. So from the very bottom of his foot all the way up to his head, he had sores. He was pussing. He had these things that were aching, and I could just see him walking, and it just hurt him. But did he give up? No, verse number 8, the Bible says that. And he took him a pot shirt and scraped himself with all. As he was sitting down, had all these boils on him, instead of giving up on himself, he just took a broken piece of clay and started scraping his skin and said, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And started scraping every last boil that he had on him. He said, yeah, go ahead and say you can give me more. I'm not giving up. You're going to have to do better than this. Scraping off the boils on him. Many of us, if we have, you know what we'll do? It hurts. I'm not doing it. Nope. I'm done. I, I, I'm throwing the towel off. I can't. But Job just said, no, keep going. Scrape it off. Keep going. I think in the, the New Testament, the apostles, uh, and they were uh, some of, they were walking, and, and some of the folks, they just say, yeah, get out of here. We don't want you. What the Bible says they did? They shook off the dust of their feet. It don't mean anything to me. They just shake it off. Keep going. And that's what we need to do with our life. Don't give up on yourself. But instead, just, just like Job did, scrape it off and just keep going. It doesn't hurt. It will. Uh, will these scars? It, it might. But just keep going. Don't give up on yourself. Keep going for the Lord. He pushed the scrapes off and he scraped it and got all the boils off. And, uh, I think of this one verse I think we all know, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. That's what can keep us going. I can do all things through Christ. Uh, though I feel like I need to give up now, I can do it. Uh, though, though I feel like I can't go on, I can do it. Why? Because if God took, I think of this all the time. How easy would it have been for Jesus to give up? Be in, bruised, crowned with thorns, mocked, punched, spit upon, whipped with a cat of nine tails, to a, to a point where they said that uh, you couldn't even see his face, you couldn't even recognize what it looks like, his body was mangled, saw, they saw bone. I think of that, that story of Emmett Till, uh, of how uh, he whistled out a girl with something in Mississippi, and uh, they, these white guys just back in the day, they, they took him and uh, wrapped a mill around his neck, beat him to death, and put him in, and they couldn't even recognize his face. Recognize what he looked like. And yet there's Jesus. On top of all that, bruised and battered and naked, and has the car on the He's, uh, I believe, probably on, on his knees, trying to, trying to go forward, and, not showing any weakness, but then he says, hey, carry that cross. Now Jesus is carrying his own cross and walking bruised and battered. How easy would it have been for Jesus to say, I'm, I'm done. 
Father, just take, take this cup from me, Lord. I, hey, Father, I give up. I'm done. I'm not going to do this. I can't go forward with this. Just imagine if Jesus would have gave up. Where would you and I be standing today? We wouldn't, there wouldn't be us. There wouldn't be, a, there wouldn't be a heaven for us. But Jesus said, Father, not my will, but thine be done. You know, that's what we need to say. Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Lord, I may be going through a hard time and I want to give up, my Lord, but not my will, but thine be done. You understand what I'm saying there? We want to give up. We want to give. We want to give in. We want to throw in the towel. But when we forget about ourselves and say, I die daily, and say, Lord, I'm going to do your will, we can go forward. Because I can do all things through Christ. You can't do it on your own. The reason we give up is because we do it on our own. We try to do it by ourselves. But when God is helping us, we can go forward. We can press on. We can do what God wants us to do. So don't give up on yourself. I can. When you feel like giving up, remember that Jesus did what He did for you. What He did for you and for what He did for me. He didn't give up, but He kept going. He kept pushing forward until he was on that cross and he hung there and shed that precious blood for you and I. And that's a testament to saying, I didn't give up on you, so don't give up on me. I did not give up on you, so do not give up on me. I think I'm trying to see if I can find it in my notes, but one thing I was reading a book last night and one thing that really popped up to me is what this group, uh, author said, and he said, knowing God is better than knowing answers. You know, I, I'd rather know God than know answers. Well, Pastor, what do you mean by that? You know, many times we give up because we don't know the answers to, to but why are we giving up? Just like, just like Florence, she gave up because she couldn't see the end. She gave up because she couldn't see the shore. So she didn't know the answer, so she gave up. But I can tell you this, a couple of weeks later, she was talking to a reporter and she said, I don't have any excuses. I have no excuses why I just didn't do it, I didn't finish. I quit, I gave up. But she said, if I would have seen that shore, if I would have seen the other side, I would have kept going. And so, two weeks later, she decided at 34, same thing. She decided she was going to go crack at it again. And so, same condition, same fog, same ruffling sea, same, same condition, same thermometer trainer were there. The pilots were up there shooting down at the sharks. 16 hours, she's swimming and swimming, and she reached the other side. Though she may have given up, she kept right back on it and she did it again. She was able to be the first lady. To, to swim the English Canal, our channel. And above that, she beat the men's record by two hours at the age of 34. And so all this to say, folks, don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on others. And don't give up on yourself. But keep going. And I, I wrote that down. Knowing God is better than knowing answers. You know, all of us, we all want to know answers to our problems. But you know something? I'd rather know God. I'd rather know God than know answers. And in heaven, I may be able to ask these questions to God. Lord, why was I able to do that? I, I believe you'll still tell me this. Because I knew you could handle it. Why do we need to know answers? Just serve God. Just don't quit. Don't quit on God. Don't quit on, on others. Don't quit on yourself. God has a plan for our lives. And don't quit. We have enough quitters in this world. The Lord needs Christians to continue. Uh, to, be the, to be that light in this, this quitting world. Uh, we don't need more quitters. We need more folks who feel victorious. Folks who are going to finish. Folks who are going to say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. I'm going to keep going, Lord, because you told me to. Uh, Lord, because I can do all things through you because you strengthened me. So don't quit. Don't quit. Keep going. If you head by every close, no one's looking around this morning. I'm done. Folks, I just want to encourage you, please do not quit.
Don't give up. Don't give in. Though you're going to be hard times coming about, don't quit. Don't quit. Why? Because God has a bigger plan. God wants the honor and glory of what our life can be. So don't quit. Please don't quit. I don't want to leave here without any decision. But maybe you were coming to church today and you wanted to quit in some way, some fashion. I don't know. So I, I just felt like I was going to quit. I'm giving up on God. I'm giving up on myself. I'm giving up on others. I'm tired of this. I'm just going to walk away and give up because it's easier to do that. But Pastor, I thank you for, for obeying the Word of God. And I just say that I'm not going to give up no matter what circumstances I have in my life. Nobody's looking around. Please head by the eyes closed. No one's looking. Would you say, oh, Pastor, would you please, would you please pray for me? I, I, I don't want to give up. I want to keep going. Would you pray for me? Anybody like that at all? Good. I see that hand. Good. I see that hand. Good. Hey, folks. I see that hand. Hey, I'll pray for you. I don't want you to give up, but keep going. God is going to do some great things. Don't give up on God, on others, or on yourself. Lord, I want to thank you for not giving up on us. Lord, I thank you for the story of Job that we can look through. Lord, we think we have it rough. Lord, in one day, one after another, after another, after another, Job lost everything. Though he didn't lose his wife, he lost her, her guidance, Lord, her, her love, her... Lord, there's so much that he lost from her, but... Lord, he never gave up. And Lord, I don't want this church to be a church that gives up just because the times get harder. Lord, because things happen. Lord, I just ask that you help us to keep going. Lord, we thank you so much for the folks who came. Lord, I, I, I pray, Lord, if there's a quitter here today, Lord, that they would turn from that, from being a quitter to being a winner. Lord, I thank you so much for them, and I thank you for the love that they have for this church. Lord, I just ask that you help us all to not quit. Help us to keep going. Knowing God is better than knowing the answers. Lord, we thank you again. We ask that you be here this time as we uh, get to baptize. We're excited. We love you. We thank you for what you mean to us. They pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to have baptism at this time. If you would, please stand to your feet. We're going to sing Psalm number 308, Higher Ground. We're going to get this all ready and set for you also. Uh, if you would, 308, Higher Ground. And we'll begin to play here. 308. Higher ground, if you all stand, please, to your feet. Once you get your place, to be awake. Higher ground.
is Ms. Rabina. Ms. Rabina has been coming now for a while, and uh, she accepted Christ, I believe, four weeks ago. And so she's uh, going forward with the Lord's baptism, we believe here. Uh, once you get saved, y'all can be seated. Go ahead. Uh, we believe that. Can y'all see if you're seated? I believe you can, correct? Right? We believe that once you get saved, baptism is the next step in the, of obedience. So we're excited for Mr. Biden this morning, uh, taking the next steps of mm -hmm. baptism and wanting to do this. And she's been a blessing to this church, her and Granger as well. Mm -hmm. Got it? excited for her and her folks were. I hope you're excited as well that we get to have this baptism open again and start baptizing again. I'm excited for it. Uh, Mr. Biden again, for, for, I think it was four weeks ago, she accepted Christ as her personal Savior. Uh, and it was here at church after one of the services. She went up to my wife and said, uh, I, I don't know if I'm saved. And so my wife was able to share that with her. Now, baptism is not salvation. Uh, baptism is just like my wedding ring. Uh, it's, uh, I've, I've been saved. But it shows folks that I'm saved and I'm married with Christ. And so that's what baptism is. There's no saving power in it. It's just the next thing. And, and to show folks, well, I'm a Christian and I'm following after Christ. Just like if I take my ring off, am I still married? Yes, yes I am. But having this ring on shows that I am married. And that's what baptism is all about. So we'll go on with the baptism this morning. Mr. Biden, you want to just cover your nose? Okay, you ready? Here we go. Mr. Mr. Biden, did you accept Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. By that great profession of faith, I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. 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 Brother 
Andrew, did you accept Christ as your personal Savior? Oh, yes. Good. By that great profession of faith, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, bearing the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. Amen.